we had talked about diversity in the previous lesson and we got a brief account of what diversity is all about why do we need classification and now that we are well aware of what is classification what is the need of classification we need to see that what are the broad categories into which the living world is divided so because we are dealing with the diversity in living world we also have an idea by now that there are five different gross categories that are the uh, kingdoms basically which we have for the living world and all the organisms which so ever are discovered or which so ever are in our knowledge that these are the living organisms we have classified them into those particular categories according to specific criteria for the classification now what we see is that those five categories are kingdom monera kingdom protista we have talked about it the third one is kingdom fungi then we have plantae and animalia so we have these five kingdoms we are going to start with kingdom monera the first and foremost kingdom in the classification and because we are talking about a classification hierarchy so we are going to keep in mind that we are going to start from the simplest ones okay so the simplest ones are the monerans which specifically include bacteria to be very specific they will be having those organisms which we normally call as bacteria there would be different uh, other categories as well but for your learning purpose you have to keep in mind in the starting that it is the bacteria which are classified into the kingdom monera all right now when we talk about classification what we need to know is that what are the set criteria according to which the classification is being made so that keeping that in mind we are going to see a few examples of each kingdom and we are going to understand what that kingdom would comprise of so whatever organisms would be there they would be having a particular set of characteristics and those characteristics we have to see for now in the higher classes you are going to study in detail about the characteristics as well but for now you have to keep in mind that what are the gross characteristics for a particular kingdom and you have to remember the examples and from that uh, those examples that we consider you have to remember those characteristics so starting with kingdom monera the first thing that i told you that this uh, kingdom is going to have unicellular organisms first thing that you need to remember we had discussed in the introductory class that uh, the organisms present in kingdom monera would be unicellular organisms then the next thing that we have to remember is that these unicellular organisms have no nucleus present inside them so the membrane bound organelles not just the nucleus the membrane bound organelles like nucleus endoplasmic reticulum and uh, golgi bodies all these are absent in these kingdom monera organisms so being very specific and very to the point we can say that this kingdom is going to have all the prokaryotic organisms now this word has a link with your knowledge from cell as the basic unit of life where we talked about that there are two types of cells first being the prokaryotic ones and the second being the eukaryotic ones so all the prokaryotic organisms whichever are present they are classified into kingdom monera and when we talk about something that is prokaryotic any organism which is prokaryotic we do we do deal with the concept that it is not going to have nucleus in fact the chromatin material would be separated as such it would be scattered it would not be confined within a membrane bound nucleus and it does not have double membranous organelles as well so this is the second point that you have to remember third point that you have to remember is that the cell wall could be present or it could be absent so the next point first was the unicellular nature of the organism second was whether it is prokaryotic or eukaryotic it is exclusively prokaryotic in kingdom monera third is whether the cell wall is present or it is absent and it is the cell wall's presence or absence which decides what would be the characteristics of a particular cell and when we are talking about a cell over here we are referring to an organism in total so what we see over here is that uh, you see something like a bacteria what you are going to find is that the structure of a typical bacterial cell would be very simple the one in the beginning was also a bacteria it was uh, 
a compound microscope image over here we have a typical bacterial cell which is having the cell wall outer cell wall as you can see over here we had discussed about a bacterial cell in the prokaryotic uh, cell knowledge as well and you see a capsule over here this capsule is followed by a cell wall then we have a plasma membrane and this in total is known these three parts they comprise the cell envelope and we have a flagella a long flagella that is a uh, appendage which is used for motility we have a bacterial flagellum and we have small pila which are uh, pili which are responsible singular is pilus and uh, plural is pili pili are responsible for attachment to the substratum there are 70s ribosomes which are present then uh, there is a dna scattered dna as you can see there are a lot many ribosomes uh, quite visible over here and there is cytoplasm now this uh, king includes certain organisms like uh, bacteria as I told you in the beginning we, you are going to find bacteria over here the second types would be cyanobacteria now what is a cyanobacteria see the word can be broken into two parts one part includes bacteria while the other one includes cyano now the cyano uh, word refers to the color bluish green color that you see that is cyano it is Cyano stands for bluish green color. So, the bacteria which is bluish green is cyanobacteria and the other name for this which is quite misleading because it is bacteria but it is named as blue green alga. If ever you have got a chance to see some, some roadside pond or uh, you know uh, specifically pond only you see the algals come over there that greenish algal bloom that must have uh, been uh, part of your notice towards the eye you must have seen that that algal bloom is not basically alga it is bacteria only and that bacteria is known as cyanobacteria okay uh, moving further apart from cyanobacteria the typical bacteria that we have we have another category that is of mycoplasmas which are yet smaller in size and you have to remember the name what are these mycoplasmas prepare for that and uh, you will get to know what these mycoplasmas are meant for what is their body structure when you go to higher classes for now you have to remember that the kingdom monera includes bacteria, cyanobacteria, and mycoplasmas these are the examples of this particular uh, kingdom and uh, then we have another example that is anabina now what is this anabina anabina is blue green algae cyanobacteria as we talk about they have uh, filamentous colonies though they are unicellular but they have colonies what you see over here is that this is one this is another one this is another one this is blue green algae and they are very much important for maximum nitrogen fixation on earth okay now you would ask that why is this nitrogen fixation important it is important because it is responsible for taking up the atmospheric nitrogen and putting it into the food chain and nitrogen is very very important you must be knowing that by now if not you'll get to know that it is part of proteins it is part of nucleic acids and no organism can survive without them they are the building blocks basically so we have the blue green algae or to be very specific uh, cyanobacteria and the example is anabina otherwise in the case of uh, bacteria if you have to remember their names we have so many examples that are covered in the chapter where we talk about the various organisms which make us ill and bacteria is one such example there are many examples of uh, kingdom monera like the one which is responsible for curdling of milk you must be knowing that that is lactic acid bacteria then there are certain bacteria which are responsible for fermentation and there are are lot many lot many organisms which belong to this particular kingdom which is exclusively prokaryotic